Hi, we've learned the basics of a vocoder in part one of this tutorial and we've gone through the M vocoders interface in the second one. Now it's time to apply all that theory into practice. As usual, we'll start from the simple stuff and move on to the more complicated. One more thing before we begin. I'll do my best to explain why I'm doing something, but I won't explain how, because it's already covered in the previous parts. For a classic vocoder sound, use a saw wave as a carrier. Start from mvocoder's defaults settings. I gotta get away, I gotta show myself that there ain't nothing more important than I am myself. Then, try turning whitening and saturation mod up. See if they can help to improve phase intelligibility. I gotta get away, I gotta show myself that there ain't nothing more important than I am myself. I gotta prove to me that I'm strong enough. Speaking of a melody, you can play whatever you like. However, having the same melody for a modulator and carrier gives the best results. As an option, mix the original vocal track with the vocoder. You'll recognize a current trend in pop music straight away. I gotta get away, I gotta show myself that there ain't nothing more important than life than my health. I gotta prove to me that I'm stronger now. No matter what's from my way, I'm never gonna back down. For robot like voices, use a low pitch carrier. To make it appear lifeless, try a single note sound. Invocator is a powerful plugin. You could also chop that long note into smaller ones, corresponding to each syllable, and thus get that mechanical feeling. Embacoda is a powerful plugin. To add an extra bass, connect additional carrier low frequency bands with the very first low band of the modulator. To do that first, find out what's the lowest band which Embacoda uses. This one. Now, you need to connect this modulator's band to the rest of the carrier low bands. Like this. And here's how it sounds. First, the original. is a powerful plugin. And with the extra bass. is a powerful plugin. For evil like voices, try a white noise instead of the sore wave. I've given up on humans. They're lazy and silly. I'm leaving this planet. It must be said, the white noise is probably one of the best sources if you're after a well pronounced vocoder effect, simply because it covers the full audible spectrum. Thus, no matter how wide or limited the modulating signal spectrum is, the carrier will always support it. Curiously, but one of the best ways to push your creativity up is to forget that mvocoder is a vocoder. Rather, think of it as a powerful set of filters you can manipulate in a number of ways. I won't go through the same tricks we just used in the voice part. Of course, you can apply them to drums as well. Instead, I'll try to demonstrate filter capabilities of mvocoder. I'm going to use it as a typical insert effect without worrying about a modulating signal. In this case, mvocoder will process only a carrier signal and to hear it, I must turn the ratio knob counterclockwise. You can hear the difference straight away. First of all, let's see what we can achieve with the filters, panels, controllers. I set the car resonance to 25%, turn the bands knob to the leftmost position, press playback, and I start to increase it.
as you can hear, even a single parameter change can give you dozens of completely different flavors. But we can have more fun if we start modulating parameters. I'll use a step sequencer to control the band's parameter and the car resonance to set the depth of the effect. Don't forget the widening. You can tune the whitening more precisely in the graphs pop-up window. Let's explore the Morph 1 mode. Set the ratio to 0.25. I'll start again from four bands. And as I'm increasing the number of bands, the sound is being transformed into something hard to describe. But I still feel you aren't impressed enough. How about this then? and I haven't even started modulating parameters. I'll leave it to you. From all modes, only the Vocoder and Morph 1 can give you special effects if you use MVocoder as an insert. The rest of the modes won't do anything apart from letting a dry signal through. We shouldn't forget the LR encoding. It's not as wild as what you've seen so far, yet it may be exactly what you're looking for. As with the voice parts, you can apply these ideas to any sort of material. Surprised? After all, what is a reverb to do with a vocoder? I promise very soon you'll have a different point of view. There's a panel we haven't touched yet, the detector. Usually it's not common for a vocoder to have these parameters available to a user. Fortunately for us, MVocoder is one of those exceptions. As you know, a detector, aka envelope follower, defines the shape of control signals running from filters of a modulator to a carrier's one. By default, its attack and release times are quite short, enough just to minimize the detector's distortion. Because a bigger value, the detector won't follow the actual envelope of the signal and the coding will be compromised. However, we're about to violate that rule. Here is what I've done. I created FX Buzz with MVocoder in it. 
I activated its sidechain. Next, I inserted M Noise Generator before M Vocoder. I could start from creating FX Buzz with M Noise Generator. However, in this case, I'd get a noise blast at its full volume, which I don't want. I'm going to use M Vocoder like I'd use any other reverb plugin. The only difference is I must send signals into its sidechain, not to FX Buzz. All is set, let's go. Not something you would expect from a vocoder, would you? Of course, M Vocoder doesn't reproduce the sound of the conventional reverb plugins. It has a very specific character. Let's solo this synth part, for example. Dry. And now with M Vocoder. It works especially well with non-pitched sounds, like drums. You can hardly beat it when it comes to creating weird, bizarre spaces. I guess you've got the picture. Now, let's see how it was done. First, I use a white noise as a carrier. Next, I set the attack to approximately 50 to 80 milliseconds to let signal transients go through clearly. Remember, we're dealing with a vocoder, not a reverb, so no such parameters like pre-delay or early reflections level. I set the release to some arbitrary value. 300 milliseconds will do for a start. I'm sure you know that a natural reverberation has a shorter decay at high frequencies. To emulate this, I decrease the release for high bands in the graphs pop-up window. As in many of the examples before, the filters panel plays the biggest part in tuning the sound. Basically, that's all. I think we can place this type of vocoding reverb between a convolution and an algorithmic one. Because on one hand, it uses principles found in convolution reverb. However, on the other hand, its nature is not static. Remember, a noise generator works constantly. That is a feature of the algorithmic reverb. I hope these ideas will be a good foundation for you to create your own. I tried to escape a traditional paradigm of vocoding and to show that there are more in a vocoder than just robot-like voices. Thank you for watching and happy vocoding. Oh, I forgot to mention that during all three parts, I've been talking through M Vocoder. This is the reason for the crunchy character of my voice.